Morning, Jerry. Morning, morning, John. Morning, Terry. Okay, I'm going to be driving to today. Before we move on, um, just have a quick key license, make sure it's okay. Yeah, I think I've got it with me. Lovely. Here we are. Okay, though, that's been ordered, John. Okay, what we do now is, put that back in your pocket. We're going to do a quick eyesight test on you. Right, right. Okay, you need to be able to see. Now, you can see the white car on the left. Can I you can, tell yes. me the registration number of that car, please? S524DSC. Okay, then, John, everything seems to be in order there. What we're going to do now is we're going to drive away from here, somewhere a bit quieter. And as I said, we're going to go through the safety aspects of entering and leaving the vehicle. We've got the of the car for today, the drill. And on the drive there, I'm just going to demonstrate to you the way we use the steering wheel. Here all the little tiny bits and pieces, the mirrors, etc. And also have a bit of a talk to see what experience you may or may not have had in the past bang, few years. Bang. So if you'd like to get in the car, please on the passenger side. Yes. Now I'll just get round into here. So it's a nice car. Yeah, it's not too bad, is it? It's quite a nice motor. Okay then, John. Now then, as you've seen, I've got in the car. Everything is already adjusted for me. So what we're going to teach you today is that every time you get in the car for the first time when I pick you up, you're going to have to make these adjustments yourself. Right. The seat, the mirrors, okay, so we can sit comfortably and we can see okay. what's going on. And that's going to be part of the lesson. As I said, we'll do that when we get there. Now then, what I'd like to do first of all, please, John, is put your seatbelt on. You don't have to put a seatbelt on. Oh yeah, on. it's a bit strange putting it on this side. That's it. Okay. Lovely, well done. Now if you also notice down by your feet, there are some pedals down there. Two pedals, yeah? Oh, yeah. Now, those yeah. are for my use. So, what I'd like you to do is, whilst I'm actually driving to uh, where we're going now, I like to keep your feet away from them pedals. Away from them. Away from yeah. them, yeah, because I said I might have to use them when I'm actually sat in that seat. Okay. Okay? That's fine. Right, so I'll put my seatbelt on. Just a bit nervous. You know, no, don't first worry, lesson. there's nothing to be nervous about. It's yeah. very, very easy, okay? Now, then, as I said, a few things I'm going to show you. Before I start the engine, I'm just going to check it's in neutral. Now, some of these things we'll go through in more detail on your next lessons, okay? okay. So I'm just going to get into gear and move off. Before I do that, I'm just going to check round to make sure it's perfectly safe. And I can see it's safe, but I'm just sitting right away we go. So, I'm going to turn right here, John, to be just watch me doing that. And I can see it's safe, but I'm just sitting right away we go. Okay, John, as you can see, I'm holding the wheel, what we call the quarter two position. I see. You can either hold it here or a bit higher, which is the ten two position, whichever you feel more comfortable with. Right. Okay. So when we actually drive with no restrictions in their arms, now I'm going to turn left. Now if you watch me with the steering wheel, I'm going to show you what we call the pull push method. I'm going to slow the car right down into first gear. The left hand comes at the top, pulls the wheel round, then the right pushes up slightly. Then the right, the left pushes up to meet the right again at the top. Then we slide the hand back so we've got good control of the wheel all the time. And so what we're not doing is we're not crossing hands. So we might lose control if we do that. Is that we, wrong to cross your hands? Well, it's not wrong, but we need to keep good control of the vehicle at all times. I see. And we hold the wheel at this position, and when we use that pull push, as we go around this corner again, if you just watch, the left hand, now if you watch this, John, watch, the left hand pulls down, the right follows. Yeah. We just hold it there like that, we've got firm control of the car. The left will now push, the right will follow again. I understand. Just pull down. Now, I want to park up here on the left hand side now. Now then, as I'm doing that, I just want you to keep your seatbelt on for a moment for me because I'm going to explain how to take it off properly. So I'm going to check in the mirrors and make sure it's perfectly safe. It's nice and steady. I'm just going to park here on the left hand side. Okay? Well, turn the engine off. Okay, now then, I should keep your seatbelt on for a moment. Now then, how would you normally take the belt off when you're in the car? Don't well, do it, just tell me how you would do it. I normally just flick the switch and that's okay. it and just well, release that, it. That actually, we don't do that. What I like to do is, is with one hand take hold of the weapon, the belt, slide it down towards the buckle, as I'm doing. Like that? So, yeah, so we've got hold of the belt. Yes. Now with the other hand, press the button in and take the belt back. Okay? Like that. That's it. And feed it back into the pillar at the back. I'm doing that, we know we're going to be safe because that buckle is made out of metal. And if we just press it and let it fly up, it's possibly either hit you on the nose or smash the window with it being I blast. understand, yes. You got me? Yes, yes. Okay, so that's the first thing we've learned about the seatbelt. Now, what I need you to do is actually we're going to have to swap places. Gracious, okay? are we? I'm going to get you to sit here. I'm going to sit there. Now, again, before you get out of the car, or you've been a passenger in the car, what would you normally do before you get out of the car, John? You just open the door? Open just, the door, yeah. Would you do any checks before you get out of the car? 
No, no, I've never done that. Okay, well, it's important, again, that we do for safety reasons. Because imagine now if you open that door, if you see a lady walking past or somebody walking past, you open the door, they're going to walk into it, aren't they? Oh, yes, right. I've done that before, yeah. Okay, so what we've got to think about now is the driver. If you open this door and there's a vehicle going past, it's going to damage your car, it could even possibly damage you yourself. Gracious okay? me, yes. Yeah. So yeah. before we do that, we have a good look. So what I'd like you to do is look over your shoulder, scan up the road, check your mirror, and make sure it's perfectly safe. Now the other thing we need to do is, when we come to open the door, what I need to do is hold the door with one hand, open the catch with the other, because it's a bit windy today, as you can see. And if we just did that, push the door open, the wind could catch the door, it could damage your vehicle. Oh, yes, okay? I understand, yeah. Okay, then once you're out of the car, make sure the door's shut. Again, don't leave it open, because if you leave the door open and this wind catches it, it's going to damage your car. Right. Okay, once the door's shut, I would then like you to walk to the back of the car, stand on the pavement and wait for me there. Okay. Okay, so what I'd like to do now, John, is please, if you just have a good look round. Can like you see that? anybody? Yeah, look, look round the back of the seat there. Yeah. Check your mirror. Uh-huh. Okay, and if you take hold of the door with your left hand and open it with your right, Can a quick glance now, that's it, open the door, exit the vehicle and just wait at the back of the car for me on the pavement. Okay. Please, John, make sure the door's shut. Well done. Now then, a couple of things. One, because we come around the back of the car, we can make sure all the doors are shut. If it's a four-door car, we can make sure the back door is shut as well. Also now, because you're at the back of the car, if you look down the road, you can see it's perfectly safe and clear. Any other vehicles coming towards you can actually see you as well. If you walk around the front, they possibly won't see you and you won't see them. It could be nice. Okay. As we come around, if you come around this way, please, John. If we come around the back, if we can add a four-door car, we can make sure that the back door is shut. And now because you've come around here, if you stand a bit more this way, as you've opened the door, what's going to happen is, you open the door and you won't step out of the road. Because if you came to the front, you possibly stand there, walk back into the road, towards a car coming in front of you. What I like to do now is, before you actually open the door, you have a look up and down the road to make sure it's safe. If you look around this way, take hold down the road. That's it. Just check up and down. Now when you get into the car, John, I just want you to sit there for a minute. Don't play with anything, anything because I'm going to actually instruct you of how to, how, how to actually carry out the exercises and do adjusting. Okay? So if you just check it safe and enter the vehicle. Fine, yeah, yeah. okay. Take the car and I'll ground the other side. Okay, now we've just gone through some safety aspects of getting out of the vehicle and getting into the vehicle, yeah. which you've got to remember. The next thing we're going to do is do some adjustments inside the car. But before we do that, I'm just going to ask you a few questions. I just want to find out what experience you may have had in your past. Um, have you actually been behind the wheel of a car before? I've never been behind a car, no, okay. at the wheel of a car, no. Not um, a problem. My wife's always done the driving. So you've watched and, her? Uh, yeah, I've always been in that seat. Okay, no problem. What about um, a motorbike or a push bike? Have you ever done anything like that? I can ride a push bike, yes. Ride a push bike, good. Well, one of the most important skills we do need to be a driver is observation. Okay, so even when you're on the bike, if you come to, say, for instance, the end of this road here, what would you do before you actually got onto the new road? Oh, I'd look. You look. And make sure it's safe to That's go. That's it. Then, You'd yeah. look. So, most important thing we do need to be a driver is observation, which you've already got. Yeah. So we've actually got our first leg on that sort of um, runner on the ladder. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Now then, I've got a little book here, some pictures in it, which are going to help me explain to you what we're going to do and also make it a bit easy for you to understand as well okay yes now then first thing we need to do when we get into the car is a couple of checks one i'd like you to take all the door handle the door and just give it a quick shake to make sure it's actually shut because yes, you don't be driving down the road and that's rattling you have to stop to shut it again okay yes. and we've got the thing of safety as well the next thing we're going to do is check the handbrake or the parking brake now then we need to check this is applied and secure so that the vehicle won't move away. Okay, because even if you're on a, a flat road as we're on today, the weight of the person getting into the car can actually make it move slightly. I, I so see, what I like yeah. you to do is with the left hand, if you just take hold of that and pull it up and make sure there's a firm pressure there. Yes, you can see, yes. We see it's not moving, yes. so that is now telling us the actual parking brake is applied. Good. Next thing we need to do is adjust the seat and adjust our mirrors. Now then, which do you think we'd adjust first? Do you think we'd adjust the seat or the mirrors first? Is it the mirrors? No. Well, actually, we'll adjust the seat first. Ah, okay? right. Because if we'd adjusted the mirrors first, then we did the seat, do you think we'd still be able yeah. to see what we've, yes. we've first looked at? 
Yeah. Okay. So it's important that we always adjust the seat first of all. Now on the seat, this particular car, it goes up and down, forwards and backwards, and we've got the back of the seat, which is the rake of the seat, which also goes forwards and backwards, and finally the head restraint which goes up and down. Now right. I'm going to explain to you and get you to actually adjust all these different movements. Right. That's the adjustments we're going to make on the seat. Also in some vehicles the steering wheel does adjust, but in this particular vehicle it doesn't, so we don't have to worry about that for today. Right. Now the first adjustment we're going to make is the base of the seat. And what I'd like to do, if you look down where your feet are, you'll see three pedals. Yeah. Now the one on the left is called the clutch pedal. And what I'd like to do, please, John, is place the ball of your foot, which is the widest part of your foot, on that pedal and see how far you can push it for now, all the way down to the floor oh, if you can. I can't quite reach, I'm sorry. Right. So you see actually it's stretching for us. So what that's just telling us now is that you're too far back from the pedal. So what I'd like to do is, if you take hold of the steering wheel with your left hand and place it at nine o'clock, now with your right hand place it around the back of your right leg, around the back, that's it so you don't get the leg caught. Pull that little bar, you find a little metal bar. If you pull that up towards yourself and pull yourself forward in the seat and that'll slide the seat forward. Is that more. okay? Yeah, a bit more maybe. That's it, hold it there. Now let go of the bar. Just rock the seat and make sure it's locked in. Yes. Okay, you see how that little lock ah, that that went click. in then? That little ah, click. Right. Okay. Now again, again with your left foot, if you place it on the pedal for me and push it down this time and tell me how that feels. I can reach the floor, but I think I'm a little close. You think you're a little close? Mm. Okay, not to worry. If you just take it back slightly then, about there, hold it there now. Again, make sure it's locked in. Good, yeah. remember that? There we go, get the little click, click again. again. Yes. Yeah. So push it down again for me, John. How does oh, that feel? that's much better. Fantastic, good. So now we've got the base of the seat done. Now we'll also need the level, the height of the seat, all right? Now, do you feel a bit too high up there? Do you feel too low down in the seat? No, I feel okay. Okay. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to actually see how we do adjust it anyway, in case you do get right. in the car sometime. Okay. So if you place your right hand this time at 12 o'clock on the steering wheel right at the top, hand. the right yes. hand at the top, and with your left hand, just down to your side, there's a little lever. Ah, oh, I okay? see it, yeah. If you pull that lever up and push yourself down oh, back, gracious. see how it goes yeah. down, yeah. Yeah. right? Now, if we let go of it, that'll be the seat locked in. Do now, I Oh, there we go. A little yeah. click I again, do that. all right? Now, to take the seat back up, again, take all the wheel at 12 with your right hand. Yes. Now, this time, as you pull the lever up, pull yourself up in your seat so you're taking the weight off the seat. Oh. Okay, and let go of it. Make sure it's locked in again. Yes. Okay, so now we've got the height of the seat adjustment. Right. Yes. Now, the next one I'm going to do is the back of the seat, which is the rake. Now, if you look down to your left hand side, look around the side of the seat, you'll see a little. Oh, yes. Little yes. Um, disc there. Now, if you get a little sit in your seat, so you're looking through the windscreen. You place your left hand on that disc and take it to, or turn it toward the front of the window. Oh, it and comes up. See how up. it comes up. Yes. Okay. Now then, if you take it a bit more, all right. What I need to do now is just sit in your seat, you let go of the wheel. You just clasp your hands like that, make a fist, and just rest them on top of the wheel for me. Now you can see there, uh, you've actually got the wheel just near your thumb. What we actually need there is that steering wheel to be on your wrist. On the wrist. So that's telling us now you're a bit far back in your seat. I so see. again, if you adjust it a bit more towards the front, a bit more maybe. That's it. Now do it again. Ah. Now you see your wrists are actually on the ah. wheel. So that's now telling us when you got all the wheel. Remember, on the drive down, I said to you, we hold it at the quarter to a ten two position. Mm -hmm. If you just take hold of it at the quarter two position, oh, you can that's see better. now you've got a yes. slight bend in your arms. Yes. So we actually come to turn the wheel, no restrictions there mm. stopping you turn the wheel. So we've now got a good seat in position. Ah, right. Next thing we're going to do is adjust the head restraint. Now the head restraint is there to save your neck in the event of an accident. It so stops you getting what we call whiplash. Right. Now to adjust it, what you must do is, if you like to do, John, is rest your head on it for me. Okay. Now if you take hold of the head restraint with both your hands, place your fingers behind, your thumbs in front, tilt it towards you. Now push it down a bit. Tilt it a bit further forward and push it down a bit. Nice ah. and easy. Okay. See how it moves up and down? Yes. Now then, if you take it up about halfway again, hold it there, let go of the restraint. Now, if you place your head against it again, now you'll find there, now, the middle of the head restraint is about level with your eyes and your ears. So that's now telling us that it's in the correct position for you. Oh, okay? yes. Yeah. Now, when you're driving, make sure you're actually resting your head on it, okay? Right. Because you need to be able to see through the windscreen safely, okay? Right. That's our seat done, okay? Yes. Now then, it's important now that we do the mirrors. Now, you've got three mirrors in this vehicle. Don't worry about this one here, that's mine. Okay, I will use that for looking through the back. Now, you've got two exterior door mirrors and one interior mirror. Now then, to adjust the mirrors, we need to be seeing a picture like this. We have three mirrors, two exterior mirrors, as I just said, and interior mirror. Now, the glass we've got to have a look at first of all. The glass in the interior mirror 
is what we call the flat glass. And this gives us our true picture of what's actually behind us. Whereas our exterior door mirrors are slightly bent and what's called convexed. Now then, that makes things look a bit smaller and a bit further away than they actually are. It's just to give us a wider field of vision at the side and the back of the car when we're driving. And this is something you will get used to as you start your driving career and as your lessons progress. Okay? Now then, the adjustment of the mirrors. We need to adjust all these three mirrors so we can see as much as we can behind and the side of the vehicles. And you can see in this picture here, they do slightly overlap each other as well. So the first mirror we're going to adjust is the interior. Now what I'd like to do, John, please, imagine now you're driving down the road. If you sit back in your seat, take hold of your wheel. Now with your left hand, what you like to do is place your left hand on the edge of this left side of the mirror. So we're not touching the glass because we might smudge it and won't be able to see properly. Like that? That's it. Now then, what I like to do is adjust that mirror so we can see the back window in the mirror. So think of the back window as a picture, your mirror as a frame, slot that picture into the frame so it's equal on all sides. That's fine. Okay, I so can you can just everything. tell me what you can see there now, please, John. I can see the... I can see the cars behind, I can see the chappy behind who's uh, cutting the hedge. Fantastic. Um, I can see the car on the other side of the road Good. as well. Good, well done. All right. Now, the interior mirrors. On this particular car, we've got electric mirrors. Okay, so what I'd like to do, John, is please, if you just place that key in the ignition for me. Now, the ignition is a bit like your front door lock at home. Okay, yes. it's just to the right hand side of the steering wheel. You place that in there, but don't turn just in a moment. As I said, it is electric, so we just need how to accept. Uh, to adjust them. Now if you look to your right hand side on your door, okay, you see just near the handle there's a little brown switch. This one here? That one there, okay. Now the top of that is another little switch of two arrows. Oh yes. And the one pointing to the left is for the left exterior door mirror and the one pointing to the right is for the right exterior door mirror, okay. Right. Now then, we're going to turn the key. I want you to turn the key for me till the little lights come on the dashboard. Just a moment, before you do that, if you just, as you turn the key, if you take the steering wheel and just move it from side to side slightly because you've got we can feel that they've got a little steering lock on it, it. So it won't move, move. So don't do that we've got a steering lock on there so when you turn the key it might not turn so we need to release the pressure on it so if you just take hold of the key and just turn it and release the pressure if you need to nice and gentle like that's that? it again turn it once more till the lights come and then hold it still oh yes okay, all good. the lights keep it there now then we're going to adjust the right door mirror first which is this one here okay yes now the picture we need to see in this is at the side of our car and the back end, just in the bottom left hand corner of the mirror. Yeah. Okay. So again, we're going to adjust that as though we're driving down the road, because don't forget, when we're checking the mirrors, we need to be just glancing at them if we can. So it's safe and we're keeping our, most of our vision to what they're ahead of us. Right. Okay? Yes. So, if you look at that mirror now, yes. switch that little switch of the arrows to the right. I have done, Now yes. the one underneath is like a little clock face. Yes. So if you just move that from side to side and just see the reaction you get from it and what happens oh, yes. with it. Can you it's see moving. that? Yes, you see it moving? moving yes. So I like to adjust it so you get a little picture like this just in the bottom left hand corner of your mirror. So the little, the back part of the back car. Back part of our car, oh, just right. in the back there. So we don't see too much of it, just the back end of it. There we go. Okay, so you just That's tell me what you can see in that now. I can see the chap is still sort of cutting the hedge at the bottom. I can see the cars parked on both sides of the road and, and there's two pedestrians crossing behind Well me. done, good. Now we're going to adjust this left door mirror. Okay, the exterior mirror. Now then, the little switch on the top, if you turn that now to the, flick it to the left one, good. Now then, if you want to adjust this one now, so we can actually see what's in the side, we need to see a picture now similar to this, so we can just see the corner oh, of the car yes. in that mirror. Oh yes. Okay, good. Now if you ever come to the point where you've got a car which has the little levers here, okay, if you do have a passenger, ask them to move it for you because if you lean across and adjust it when you sit back it's going to be out of adjust uh, out of alignment okay so if we can just turn that key back for me please john and hand it back to me thank you well done okay so that's our mirrors adjusted now if you notice on this interior mirror just the side here we've got a little switch Okay. I've often wondered what that was for. Well, that's when we're driving at night. If a vehicle comes up behind us at night and it's got its headlights full on, it can actually dazzle you and you won't be able to see properly. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is just turn that. If you take hold of it with your left hand and just turn it, and you see oh. what's happened? It's the gone. Mirror's, it's, it's, moved gone. it's moved. And we're actually getting a, getting a reflection there of what's behind us. Oh, that's of all. course. It's reflecting. Got, is it the roof? That's it. It's just re reflecting back. There's only one yeah. mirror, so you don't have to worry about it. It'll just reflect. So when the car's gone, we just turn it back again and that gives us back our picture of what we've got. Oh yes. Okay? Yes. Good. So that's our mirrors. 
Done. Now then, we're just going to go back now to this picture. We've got a seatbelt. Now then, we've just talked briefly about the seatbelt, how to take the belt off, but now we've got to think about how to put it on. Right. Okay. So what I'd like to do, please, John, is with your left hand, if you reach around and take hold of the buckle of the belt... I can't quite can reach. See? I think I'm a little bit too well, far. If you take your right hand then, and just reach around and take hold of the buckle, and put it to your left hand, now what I'd like to do is take that buckle and place it at 9 o'clock on the steering wheel for me. 9 o'clock? 9 o'clock. Let's pull it forward. There we go. Now with your right hand, take it back to the top of the belt and pull the belt forward. Okay, now I'd like to place that buckle into the anchor point to your left there. Make sure it's locked in. Push it in, lock it in. Then feed the belt back. Just make sure it goes over your hips and your front of your chest and there's no right. twists and turns in it. No. Nope. How does that feel? That feels quite nice, actually. Okay. Yeah. So, now, can you remember how we took it off before? Yes, I held it with two hands, didn't okay, I? Okay, so can you do that for me again? This time hold it with the right hand. That's it. Slide your right, right hand down, that's it, and take it and feed it back. Good. So why do we do that? I think you mentioned something about it sort of hitting me in the nose yeah, as well as that's it. the Yeah, that's it. If that spring yep. goes back, it can actually hit you on yes. the nose. Okay. Or on the window. Or on the window. Yes. Okay, seatbelt. Are you aware of the legalities of the seatbelt? You told me Not before really, you were doing no. the, your highway code. Have you got to yeah. that point yet? I, I have started it on the computer with um, a video I got from Shorepass. Okay, good. Right. Well, the legalities of it is basically, if you have anybody under the age of 14, you are responsible to make sure that they have actually got that seatbelt on. Okay? But anybody over the age of 14, it's entirely up to them. Right. But are you, as a driver, for safety reasons, I would advise you that you make sure they have got the belt on. Because right. if they're sat behind you and there's an impact, they're going to come forward. So it's really, really important that you make sure it's on. Okay? Yes. That's our seat belt done. We're now going to move a bit further on. And we're going to talk about the wheel and pedals, gear stick and handbrake. Okay? Now on the way down, we actually demonstrated the wheel to you. Can you remember the, what we called it, the way we turned yes. the wheel? The pull and the push, was it? The pull, pull and push. push method. Pull Good. And push, well yes. done. Yeah. And where do we hold the wheel? At the ten to two, or was it quarter to two? Quarter to three position. Quarter Either to three. Either of those, whichever is yeah. more comfortable for you. Okay. Good. Now then, if you look down near your feet again, John, we've got three pedals. Uh -huh. From right to left, we've got A, B, C. We've got an accelerator, which today we're going to we're going to call a gas pedal. It's easier for us to say and quicker. We've got the middle pedal, which is the brake pedal, and the left pedal, which is the clutch pedal. Right. Okay. Now then, operation of the pedals. To operate the brake pedal and the gas pedal, we use the right foot and the right foot only because we only use one pedal at a time. To operate the clutch pedal, we use the left foot and the left foot only again, okay? First pedal, gas pedal. It's a bit like your tap at home. You turn the tap on, the water comes out, doesn't it? The more you turn it on, the more water comes out. Oh yeah. yeah. Same with that. So what we do with that, the terminology we'll be using for that is, um, when I start our lessons you'll be saying to you I'd like to set the gas and that is basically just touching the gas pedal a tiny bit pushing it down about the width of a pound coin okay so we'll just give some power to the engine more gas increase the fuel to the engine less gas it takes the fuel away okay now the gas pedal makes the engine go faster right okay now the middle pedal John is the brake pedal right now to operate the brake pedal, we use the right foot again. Mm -hmm. and we use the widest part of the foot, which is the ball of the foot. Right. Again, we don't bang it. We use what we call progressive braking. Right. So when you place your foot on the brake to actually slow or stop the vehicle, that's what this pedal does in this case, we apply the pressure. As the vehicle begins to slow down, we apply a bit more pressure. Then just as it begins to stop, just release that pressure slightly, then reapply it. So what we're doing there is we're balancing the weight of the vehicle as well. So we just put the foot onto the brake, and pushed it down and banged it, with all the front, all the weight it got to the front, the car would dip, then bounce back up again. Okay? Right. Yes. Now when we operate the foot brake, the up brake operates in all four wheels of the car at the same time. There is a mechanism also there which allows the other if in case say one brake failed, it would allow the others to actually operate as well. Right. Okay? When we touch the pedal, the next thing we get are the brake lights at the back of the car, which then informs that anybody behind us we intend to either slow down or stop, and it brings the speed of the car down. Now, when we operate these two pedals, what I like to do is place the heel of your foot, as you can see in this picture, on the floor, slightly away from the pedals, but in between them. So that we're actually pivoting from one pedal 
to the other one, like my pen's right. going. Okay, right, so it, so it makes it easier to operate the pedal. Yeah. Okay, so we we'll just pivot from one to the other. So I'm not lifting my foot up. So you're not lifting your foot away. Right. Okay. So that's our brake pedal. The next one we're going to talk about is the one on the left, which is the clutch pedal. Now again, we use the left foot for this one. Same procedure. You place the heel of your foot on the floor. Use the ball of your foot to push the pedal down. Now the clutch is a link between your engine and your gearbox, which allows us to change gear and to get the car ready to move away. Now this pedal, we can push it down fairly sharp, but when we release it, we always let it up gently. Because if we let it up too quickly, then what will happen is these two plates here will just bang together and will stall the car. Now you can imagine these plates are like dinner plates at home. Same, similar. When we put the clutch down, it opens the plates. As we allow the clutch pedal up gently, the plates come to the point where they're just touching. And this is called the biting point. And this I've heard is the, that word before. Have you heard that before? Yes, yeah. Good, well done. And this is the point where we're getting the car ready to move away. And what will happen is, when you get to this point, because the engine's moving, it slows the engine down slightly, and it starts to vibrate a tiny bit. Okay? Yes. So that's the note when we know we're actually at the biting point. And we don't need to worry about that too much anymore, because we will go through that when we actually come to the moving up and stopping. Once we've got the vehicle moving, we then allow the pressure all the way to the top nice and gently. That gives us full pressure on the clutch, and we've now got the drive to the vehicle. Right. Okay? And once we've got the drive, then we take the foot away from the pedal and rest it on the floor. We don't want to keep the foot on the pedal, because we do keep, do keep pressure on it, then we could actually damage the workings of it inside the right. clutch. Okay? So, coming from there, we're going to come down to the gear stick. Now you can see, this is the gear stick in the middle of the car here. Uh -huh. Now it's a bit like a letter H when we operate the gear stick. Today, as you can see in our car, we've got five gears and one reverse, but we're not going to talk about fifth and reverse right. today. We're just going okay. to talk about one to four. First gear is a power gear that gets the car moving if we're on a slant, or it's on a straight road or on a hill. But there may be an occasion where we start off in another gear, but again we'll deal with that as and when we come to it. Second and third gears, they're the gears we're going to use to build the speed up, and the fourth gear is going to be our cruising gear when we've got to 30 miles an hour. Okay? Right, yeah. Now then, to operate this, you see, I said this before, we've got this letter H. Yeah. Now then, this is what we call neutral. And when the gear sticks in neutral, we find it's always at this point here between third and fourth. Right? So if we do forget where it is, that's where it's going to be. Right. Now to operate the gear stick, we need to always use the clutch as well. So you remember what I just said to you about the clutch? Yeah. What I'd like to do, John, please, is place your left foot on the clutch and push it down to the floor. Right now, down? Right down to the floor. Now keep it down. Yeah. Okay. What I'd like to do, please, John, is with your left hand, I'd like to put palm to me, thumb down, place it on the gear stick, round the side of it, that's it, and then push it against this wall here. You'll find a little wall. If you push it to me, if you push it up to first gear, that's oh, first yeah. gear. Yes. Okay? It's like going through a little gate. Yes. And when we're going from first to second, keep that pressure towards me and move it down through the gate again into second gear. Well done. Now, if I'm going from second to third, what's going to happen as we push it into this neutral position here, it will bring itself back there because there's a spring doing so. It'll bring itself back. But to do that, all you need to do is take your hand now and place it the opposite way so it's palm to you, thumb up. Just bring your fingers in slight, that's it. Now, as you push it up to second gear, to neutral, it'll come across after second and come across to you. Oh, it's you see how it itself sprung back. Yes, Good. it sprung itself Now, we don't need to pull it, because it'll do that every time. Now, if you push it up now, one, that's third gear. Oh, right. Pull your fingers behind the bar, that's it. Now, bring it down to fourth gear. That's fourth gear. Now, yeah. while it's there, why not just move it from side to side? It hardly moves, does it? It's hardly hardly any moves, yes. Okay. Now, if you go back up to the neutral position, hold it there, now move from side to side. Oh, it's a battle crash. See the lot. difference in... Yeah. Movement it's a real battle. So that's yeah. how we know when we're ah, in neutral before right. we start the car. Okay. Uh, can okay? I try that again? So what I need to do now, John, is you certainly try again, but this time I'd like you to look through the window, because remember, when you're driving, yes. for safety reasons, we won't be able to look down at that. Right, Okay. Yes. You need to keep our eye on what's going out there. So if you take hold of the wheel with your right hand as well, so you're driving. Yes. So if you go into first gear for me. Now that's over and up. Is well that done. correct? Second. That was straight down, was it? Good. Third. Now move my hand that way. And up again. Fourth. That was that way, wasn't it? Is well done. Is that correct? That's correct. Perfect. Chris. Now back into neutral. That's so I can. And how do we check it? it? There we Fantastic. go. Fantastic. Well done. Good. Brilliant. If we take your foot now off the clutch pedal, you can do it. Good. So that's our gears. Right. Okay. Now then, we're going to go from the gears now to the handbrake or the parking brake. Okay. Now the handbrake and the parking brake 
we will call the handbrake for the lesson. That secures the vehicle once we've stopped. Now, we don't use the handbrake to stop the vehicle. We only use it once the vehicle has come to a halt right. to secure the vehicle so it doesn't move away. Right. Okay. Now, to operate the handbrake, what I like to do, John, please, if you, with your right foot is place that on the brake pedal for me. Can you remember how to, which one it is, how to do it? It's the middle one, yes. Good. We'll press it down, press it down, and keep that pressure on the pedal. Don't let it off, because we're going to release the handbrake in a minute. Right. Because if we let that brake off, the car could move. Right. So take hold of the handbrake with your left hand. Place your thumb on that little silver button. Now, to operate this, what you need to do is to pull the handbrake up against the pressure. Hold it there and push the button in. Oh, yes. You got that? Yes. Push it down, all the way. That is the handbrake off. Right. Now, to apply the handbrake, to, re put, or to put it back on, put your button in again with your thumb. Pull the handbrake up, right to the top. Hold that pressure. Now, let go of the button first. Oh, now, yeah. let go of the handbrake. Oh, it stays there? It stays there, so yeah. it doesn't move out. If you just give it a little tug, you'll feel, you'll tug it up, that's it. Yep. The handbrake secure. Yes. Okay. The car's not going to move in. Take your foot off the brake pedal for me, John, please. Okay. Now, the reason we use that button is very important because inside the handbrake, we've got a mechanism called the ratchet. It's made from metal. And if we don't use the button, it'll go click, click, click. And it will eventually wear away. My wife does that. Okay, does she? So yes. does mine. So, if it clicks like that, it'll wear away with it being metal. And at some point, you may be on a hill, for instance. Handbrake goes on, get out of the car. Slam the door, the handbrake comes off, and the car will roll away. Ah, yes, okay? yeah. So remember, the handbrake is to secure the vehicle, and we don't get any brake lights at the back of the car either. Right. Okay. So we're now going to come back to the steering wheel again. Right. Okay. Now then, if you look to the left, John. Yes. And just on the left-hand side here, you just don't slide your hands up towards the quarter two position. Okay. Extend your fingers forward, and you'll feel a little stalk. Yes. That's called the indicator stop. Right. So what we're going to actually do is, I'm going to give you the key again, and we're going to actually demonstrate to you how we use the indicators. So you place that again in that little key for me, in the lock. And again, just turn it two turns so the little lights come on. There we and go. And hold it there. Okay. Now then, with your left fingers again, if you place them on top of that stalk and push it down. Oh, it's that clicking. clicking sound? That's telling us the indicator are on. If you look at the dashboard where the clocks are, you'll yes. see a little green flashing arrow to the left. Outside the car, at the front and rear, we're getting a flashing amber light. That's telling us our left indicator's on. Right. Now, when we're driving down the road, as we turn the wheel left around the corner, as we straighten the wheels up, there's a mechanism in there which, again, will turn that off. But today, because we're not moving, we can't do that. So what I like to do now is push it up one click for me, and that'll switch it off. OK? Yeah. Good. To go right, just make sure there's no vehicles coming up so we're not going to make anybody mistake us moving away. So it's quite safe. I like now to push the indicator stalk up to the right hand side. Okay, and again, if you look at the dashboard, we've got a little green it's arrow. Flashing on my same right audio sound. Side. Yes. And this time at the front and rear of the vehicle on the right hand side with a flashing amber light. Right. Okay, if you push that down for me. Good. If you turn that key all the way back, that's our indicators done. Right. Okay. Next thing we're going to talk about now is the ignition itself, because we've actually just used it a couple of times, but we need to know what it actually physically does. Now, the, on the indicator, we've actually got, sorry, the ignition, we've got three movements on it. Okay, and if I just refer back to our first page here, as you can see, just there, John, that's where the ignition barrel is, yes. the lock. Yeah. Okay. Is it always there on cars? No, it depends on the type of vehicle. Sometimes it's on the left, depending right. on it might be a French car, for instance, because it's on the opposite side of the road, and they do have it on the opposite side. Right. Okay. But all our cars is on the right. As I said, we've got three positions. And it's, if you look round, you'll see there's three marks on it. One, two, three. Oh, yes. Okay. Now, the first one, as we put that in, as we, when we come to start the car before to check the mirrors, I actually have to actually move the wheel slightly. Yes. Because of the steering lock. So the first movement unlocks the steering lock, which prevents the car being stolen, and it also gives us power to some of the instruments. In this case, on this car, it gives us power to the radio and to okay. the heater. Okay. Yes. The second one gives us then power to the ignition, uh, sorry, the dashboard, which we saw before, all the little lights come on. Now then, after a couple of moments, one or two may go out. Okay. Some will stay on. But once we actually start the engine, all barring one will all go out then. Right. The one that's left on will be to tell us the handbrake is still secure, but once we release the handbrake, that will also go out. Right. Whilst you're driving, if any of those lights do come on, then I suggest that you park the vehicle safely on the left somewhere, turn the engine off, 
and check the appropriate part of the car showing you showing you the lights okay right. yeah so what i like to do now is before we're going to have a go at that, but before we do that, just make sure your feet are away from the pedals for me, John, because we won't be touching any pedals at the moment. Right. Okay, so I'd like to turn that key to the first one for me. Like that? Okay, just turn it so this light comes on here. That's ah, it. So right. we can see how the ignition light, yes. uh, the radio light comes on? Yes, and all these lights have come on here. Okay, so the second one, now if you turn it to the second one, that's it. Now the lights have come on the dashboard there. Okay, now if you noticed, one or two have gone out. Yes, they have. Now the third position, gives us power to the ignition and it also engages the starter motor and as you turn it you'll feel it going against the spring as you turn the ignition on it engages the starter starts the engine once the engine started just let go with the key right. don't turn it back because you'll probably turn the engine off right okay so your feet away from the pedals yes good if you turn it just turn it so it starts the engine and let go let go so you can hear the engine running now yes i can yes. so that's the engine started Okay, what I like to do now, John, is just turn that all the way back, take the key out, and take it out and hand it back to me. Good, well done. Right, unfortunately, we've come to the end of our lesson today. Um, we've run out of time. Before we do that, I'm just going to ask you a few questions, right. see what we've remembered. Okay, so, method we use for the steering. Can you tell me how we turn the wheel? Yes, the 10 to 2. Um, it's we hold it at the 10 to 2, or is it, was it quarter past quarter the quarter to 2? Quarter to 2, Orton, that's the way we hold and it. And we use the pull and push method. Fantastic, well done. Can you tell me what the handbrake's for? It's to hold the vehicle still. And it stops at the road, is that correct? Brilliant, well done. And the final question we'll ask you, when you get in the car, what's the first thing you're going to adjust, and why? Adjust my seat. Good, why do we adjust the seat first? So I'm, I'm sat in the correct position, is that right? That's correct. Ah, good. To allow us to do what? So we can adjust our mirrors. That's it. So we can, first of all, drive comfortably, reach all the controls with ease, and we can check our mirrors as we're driving down the correct way. Okay, John, as I said, we've um, run out of time now. Um, it's been nice seeing you today. I've enjoyed I'll, today. Have you enjoyed it? I've learned a well lot. Well done. Yes. So in the next lesson, we're going to go into the moving off and stopping. Right. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. You're welcome. Thank you.